Welcome to Carrie's Kitchen. Happy Friday. Um, we're here going to, instead of doing a recipe, an actual recipe today, uh, we're going to do some wine and cheese pairings. Um, we've been getting a lot of really nice feedback um, about doing Carrie's Kitchen episodes and I've been getting some questions and a lot of them are actually about pairing wine and cheese. So I thought that we would uh, do some of that today. I've got some um, really great cheeses here. I'm not, we're not going to be talking about charcuterie today, um, mostly just the cheeses. Um, and I'm going to be pouring four wines, four, four Cornerstone wines today. Um, I'm going to be pouring the brand new 2018 uh, Sauvignon Blanc from the Farina Vineyard. That's a new release for us. I'm going to be pouring the 2018 Coralina Rosé, also a new release for us. And then the 2016 Pinot Noir, which I have been telling you now for a couple of weeks, goes with everything. So now we'll see if that's really true. And then we're going to be pouring uh, also the other new release for the wine club um, next month, and that's the 2016 Oakville Station Red Wine. So as you know, before you get going in the kitchen, I think it's important always to have something in our glass. Mandatory. This is my husband, Jeff. He's Hello. actually been um, here with us on these uh, Carrie's Kitchen, and I appreciate that you're here today, honey. Honey bunny. Thank you. Nice to see you all again. Jeff's a, an instructor. He teaches wine and food pairing classes, and he teaches um, at both the Culinary Institute in St. Helena and at Copia in Napa. So I'm actually really glad that he's here. He knows an awful lot about cheeses. And so I would like to toast you. Thank you. Cheers, honey. Cheers to us. Here's to, cheers to cheese. And here's to cheese. What a friend we have in cheeses. <laughs> I bet you've never said that before. I try to get it in every time I can. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do first. We're going to taste the rosé and the Sauvignon Blanc, but go ahead and taste the Sauvignon Blanc. All right. And then we're going to start with some of the cheeses that should mm. actually go together, that should pair beautifully with a wine like this. It's got some bright acidity. Um, young and fresh. Young and fresh, very young and fresh. Um, so if we were going to pair something with young, fresh, light, bright acidity, the classic is goat cheese. Don't we go goat cheese? Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. So what we have is we actually have a goat cheese, uh, Spanish goat cheese. And I've actually picked some things from all over the world. Um, but what truthfully, California has some of the most amazing artisan um, cheese shops, cheese uh, productions, production facilities. But I am trying to find some things from all around the world. So we are actually pretty good at making goat cheese here in California. We got good goats. We do. But this in particular is... Spanish. So, cracker? Well, I don't mind if I do. Okay. Let's give that a try. Friday's at four. It's a good excuse to have a glass of wine and just put some in your mouth. But there you go. All right. I'm going, I'm going Sauvignon Blanc. Okay. Okay. I got to drink something. Mm -hmm. mm. Tart. Let me bright, try. Bright acidity. I know I should probably not tell you how it tastes, but... Oh, You'll I've had it before. I know. This is actually one of our favorites. And what's nice about the herb goat cheese is even if you don't want the herbs, or you can just get the, the goat cheese that from the core and not don't have any of the herbs on there. But I think it adds a nice little layer. Mm-hmm. It's tangy. It's bright. Goat milk has the highest acid of any of the milks from any of the animals. Mm -hmm. So it makes a high acid, tangy cheese. And that is particularly well matched when you have a high acid wine like a Sauvignon Blanc or any of the really bright, crisp, refreshing whites. Mm -hmm. But Sauvignon Blanc is a natural with it. And this one actually does work out pretty well. I haven't had it yet. Let's oh, see. well, see, I always jump the gun. You're always a step or two ahead That's of me in yeah. every aspect. Well, not every aspect, but yes, probably mm -hmm. more than I should be. That's really good. Yeah. That's a classic one. That is a classic one. So. I've got quite a few cheeses here, the, I don't know, 10 or 12 of them. So for those of you that are following along, you, you don't have to try and scribble notes. We actually posted the list of cheeses up on our cornerstonesellers.com website. If you go to the tab that says recipes, you'll see the whole list. And we, they are listed in the order that we're tasting them. That'll make it a little easier. Um, if it turns out in the end you actually want to go purchase some of these or you want a little more information about them, there's some links there as well that'll give you a little more information about the cheeses. So this so, is called the uh, Capriccio de Cabra. Mm -hmm, uh, capriciousness mm -hmm. or the playful goat. Playful goat, exactly. So now I've got a couple others here that I think are gonna go. So I've actually got a cow, a cow cheddar, 
and I've got this beehive cheese, um, barely buzzed. Always a good one. That's that, one of our favorites. We kind of do like that one. In fact, mm -hmm. if you've dined at our home, you've probably we've probably put that down in front of you because we do love it. And I actually think it goes with some of the reds as well. Oh, it's a great red. But cheese. I could be wrong. So let's give that a try. I'm going to go with rosé. Okay, you go rosé. I haven't tried it yet. Mm -hmm. mm. Rosé Pinot Noir. This is actually sourced, the fruit comes from the Petaluma Gap in Sonoma. Um, it's just a really beautiful um, vineyard that they are normally making red wine out of. Um, and they sold us a few, uh, a few tons of grapes and we actually brought it in the middle of the night. Direct press, pressed it right off the skin. It's got this really beautiful um, light color. I know it's crazy to take grapes that would make a really beautiful red wine and make rosé out of it, but... But also very delicious. light and bright and mm -hmm. high acid. Maybe not quite as assertive as the young, fresh Sauvignon Blanc, but still very well matched with goat cheese and some lighter cheeses mm -hmm. like that. So the beauty of rosé and white is oftentimes they're interchangeable when you're talking about wine and food because they have some similar characteristics, depending on the rosé, of course. And if you're like us, a lot of people will put a cheese or charcuterie plate down early, like before dinner as an appetizer. And that is normally when we're serving our, our light white wines or uh, rosé. So mm -hmm. kind of makes sense. We also um, use cheese as a dessert course. Yeah. So when you're making your um, cheese board or your charcuterie board, sometimes you can put some sweet items onto that board. Um, people like to put honey and chocolate and um, candied nuts. And I've, had, I've seen people put them down at the beginning before that's you've had dinner. after dinner thing. And that's an after dinner thing. I, we, I don't do it on our boards before dinner, only because they're sweet enough that they actually don't pair with a lot of the wines and it actually turns the wine sort of sour, really. Yeah, if you have sugar in your food, it's going to make the wine, especially if it's high acid, seems tart. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the big mistakes that people make is they, well, people fall in love with the cheese board. If you're serving a cheese board by itself, and you have a drizzle of honey on something like a piece of blue or a nice goat cheese or something. It's a lovely combination. But then you add the third element mm -hmm. of wine and then it just wreaks havoc with the wine. So I think cheeses are very versatile, but you have to be very careful with the accompaniments. People put marmalades and jellies and quince, and quince paste fruit. and all that and fruit, fruit. and also um, uh, like uh, uh, um, the the uh, things that they make in Italy, I mean in, in India, with the uh, with the you know the the, the the tamarind and all that sort of oh, thing, yeah. you can get some very bizarre flavors with wine that way. Mm -hmm. They're great by themselves. On their own, they're beautiful. Yeah. And cheese itself is very versatile. You can serve it as a snack, as by itself. You can be sitting out on your patio and just having what cheese. What a good idea! We might do that. That's but a great idea. you can also have it as a first course, or you can have it as an intercourse, mm -hmm. if you will. Huh. But Or you can have it as a final course, as your cheese course, instead of having dessert. And all of those are very versatile, but it just depends on the accompaniments, where you put it in the meal. And too often times, people just fall in love with the idea of sweet, because mm -hmm. we are sweet we folks. We do. As in, in general, we do like we sweet. We grew up on sodas and desserts and mm -hmm. candy and everything else. And, those are fine, but they don't go with wine very well, unless you have a very sweet wine to mm -hmm. go with it. Mm -hmm. And so when you drizzle honey, you're really limiting where you're going to be able to use that, yeah. that cheese course and what wines you're going to be able to serve it with. Yeah. As I said to you the other day, which made you laugh, honey is just to gather flies. <laughs> yes. I... People that are <laughs> buzzing around looking <laughs> for some sugar. So sweet. And also, people serve it with strawberries and grapes and yeah. all these things that mm -hmm. they don't realize have so much sugar in them. So, sugar is not always the friend of, of wine pairing. No, they work with the cheese, but not with the not with the wines necessarily. All right, we need to jump in. Let's go. Cool. We've got. I did. I've actually. I just did the um, the cow's milk cheddar with the rosé and and. Hmm. I actually think it's lovely. It's a perfect temperature cheddar, and it's nice and creamy with this temperature. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try it with this. Was it, with some God, believe it or not, I did not pour enough in here. I am so sorry. Well, you're stingy. I, okay. I, know, I know. I'm such a, I'm such a terrible pourer. Actually, they don't let me pour wine in the tasting room because I pour too much and they call it, oh, it's a carry pour. Yeah, yeah. you got That's a heavy, right. heavy wrist. I, I do. I do. Um, you know, I'm going to actually try this. One this of the is, reasons um, I fell in love with you. I hope so. <laughs> this, is, this is barely buzzed. I love this cheese. This is, um, it's a cow milk cheese. It actually, it's made in the, in the state of Utah, 
but it's got um, ground espresso and lavender. You can't see that up close, but um, on the outside. So the rind is actually espresso and lavender. It and smells then, like coffee. Mm -hmm, it smells like coffee. I don't really even drink coffee much or, or like it that much, but this is delicious. That's the other thing I just realized I didn't mention, is that when we teach cheese appreciation and cheese and wine pairing, many people don't use the same approach to cheese as they do to wine. Wine, you know, you look at it, you feel it, you, know, you smell it, taste it. But with cheese, it's the same thing. With cheese, you definitely want to take a look at it because sometimes there's cracks, fissures, little bits mm -hmm. of dots of, of flavor, um, different textures and things, but also you want to feel it. You want to see how flexible it is and what is the temperature of the cheese and how creamy it is. And you can't do that, obviously, with a brie or a triple cream. That would be kind of weird. Where you get to lick your fingers. Mm -hmm. but, but with real cheese, you know, cheese that's a little harder, you can pick it up and feel the rubberiness and look at the texture and, and look at the cracks and little fissures and all the little characteristics mm -hmm. that make it unique. But then what people don't do is they always pop it in their mouth. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you, you need to smell it. Oh, <laughs> what else? Because the, the aromas of cheese are just as varied and interesting as the aromas of wine. Maybe not quite as delicate as wine, but, but, but all the different cheeses smell differently. And it's really fun to completely appreciate the cheese by taking a little sniff. Hmm. Sniff your cheese. Sniff your cheese. You know, you picked up that manchego. And that, this, this manchego that I picked out, it's, uh, it's sheep's milk and it comes from Spain. And there's many people produce it, but this one we love. It's actually a uh, one year aged, so it's been aged for twelve months before mm. it's sent over here. So delicious. With the rosé. with the rosé, the bright acidity of these two wines just make them so versatile with a great variety mm -hmm. of cheeses that are not too heavy. You're always trying to match weight and weight, just like you are with wine and food. You don't want to have this massive cheese and this delicate little wimpy wine. Or you don't want to have this massive wine with this delicate little wimpy cheese. Mm -hmm. You're looking for pairings that are of equal balance. So I did put some Stilton out, as you saw. Well, that's later. <laughs> and that's for later. It's a, it's a blue blue cheese. Stilton's a blue cheese. And there are people who absolutely love it. Um, I think it's one of those that will be fun to experiment. Yeah, and if you really wanted to show the difference, I mean, you would blow the either of these wines off the table with one little nugget mm -hmm. of Stilton. It would be like, okay, your mouth yeah. would explode. Yeah. And these would disappear. So let's not do that. Let's not do that. <laughs> We're not going to do that. It's just a lesson to be blurred. Yeah. So we know the, the cheddar so far, the, the goat cheese, the barely buzz, the barely buzz, and the manchego so far have paired really beautifully with these wines. I think there there's a tartness to them, but there's a the weight is it's not overpowering and overbearing. Even no. the barely buzz with the coffee on it. Now I'm going to be awake all night. No, no, no. It hardly has enough coffee on it to keep you awake right. for a couple minutes. But right. the finale of the first cheese board is Carrie's absolute favorite, favorite one. number one Uno Perfecto cheese, which is Domaine de Village, because it is truly heart attack on a stick. I mean, yeah. you it's just cream and butter and then more cream. And, and there's some cream butter. on there. It's a triple cream. It could be a quadruple cream. Oh, no, that's quadruple bypass. <laughs> and... Um, no, triple cream just means it's 75% butterfat. Or more. So you can go more higher, but then you'd have 100% butterfat, which means you're just eating butter. That's right. And there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Nothing it's not a that. cheese. So what I love about this cheese is um, it, it actually is one of those cheeses that ages. And when you first, if you first get it and it's young, it actually has this kind of firmness to it. It isn't soft or gooey, but it's, mm. you know, it's spreadable. Oh boy, this might be the reason that we're doing this today, just to tell the truth. Yeah, Domaine Village. Uh, oh, okay, we'll do a yeah, show then. Yep. Yeah. And um, if you let it age, you know, a week from now it'll be a little softer. And if you let it go for a couple of weeks in the in the fridge, not sitting on the counter, it actually starts to get this melty, gooey kind of, and you could just almost pour it on a cracker. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They call it the ooze. When a when a cheese starts to ooze, mm -hmm. it's really good. Man, those French, they do know how to make cheese. One. Cheese. I hate to tout them, but they are really good at it. Mm -hmm. But we're getting very, very good at cheese mm. as well. They had a few oh. hundred years head start. It's beautiful with the Sauvignon Blanc, but what it does on the finish, it makes it a little more cheesy. I'm getting more cheese than mm. I'm getting wine, fruit, 
acidity. Mm -hmm. That brings out the tang of the Domaine de Village, probably. Mm -hmm. What's interesting about cheese and wine, I'm sorry to keep throwing tidbits in here, but I love the tidbits. they're both fermented products, and that what mm -hmm. what gives them a, a natural uh, affinity, affinity, if you will. But um, sometimes, if you know, you can bring out the the lactic characteristic of a cheese. Mm -hmm. You can also bring out the fermented character of a cheese, or the tangy characteristic, mm -hmm. or you can bring out the sort of athlete foot smell of a cheese. See, I was going to say feet, <laughs> but I just thought people would go, oh, that's not very appealing. No, it's true. I mean, sometimes cheese smell like feet, which just means it has a lot of odor, shall mm -hmm. we say. Mm -hmm. But certain wines can bring out those flavors, and they can also match those flavors, and sometimes certain wines can hide those I flavors. And that's why it's very complex. I worked with a cheese shop that also was a wine shop for years, and we would taste wines all the time and cheeses all the time, and we'd match them two or three times a week. And at first we thought, okay, wine and cheese, it's a natural affinity, it all goes together. And we found that oftentimes certain wines and certain cheeses were just yeah. natural enemies and others were natural friends. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I did sort of, you know, load it up over here with some natural... And they're the light, cheese. more delicate, easily right. matched, and nice and, and versatile. And mm -hmm. that's perfect what you did. And I also have some in here that people say are their favorites and they love them with wine. And so we're going to try those as well. You know, we'll, we'll have a little, we'll have a little uh, comparison here today. I'm going to pour the Pinot Noir next so we also have that to play with. Because I think we're moving down the path enough that we, that I think maybe the Domaine Village would be delicious with Pinot. I'm not mm, sure. I'm not so sure about that one. I think but I'm willing bring to out try. The funk. But I'm willing to try. Bring out the right funk. <laughs> bring out the funk. But you got to twist my arm. I mean, come on. Uh -huh. I mean, Pinot Noir. You know how I hate it. I know. And this particular one from the Santa Rita Hills and Rita's Crown. Yeah. Whew, this is killer. Yeah. This is our 2016 um, Santa Rita Hills. This is a clone 828. Um, it comes off Rita's Crown, which is this really lovely vineyard that rolling hills vineyard surrounded by the sea smoke vineyards down in santa Rita hills and um, it grows on practically pure chalk it's white it's dusty you can actually pick up a, a, a hunk of it and write your name on the sidewalk with the chalk yeah it's um sitting at the top of a hill it overlooks actually most of the rest of uh, rita's crown and it's about i don't know 10 miles from the coast so it gets a lot of marine influence it gets a lot of fog it's very very cool you can see um, the ocean from there. You can see you can the, smell you the can ocean. smell the ocean from there. Yeah. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. You know, okay. after two or three glasses, this gets a lot more fun. Really? Because I was having fun from the start. <laughs> you know, now after tasting this, mm. the domain de village is not going to work. It's with not going to work. It's with not. That. As soon as you mentioned it, I went, oh, she doesn't know, but it ain't going to work. No, it's not. I can, after tasting that wine with that beautiful fruit mm -mm. and that lushness in the middle. Yeah. And there's that little bit of sweet, like sweet cherry. The tanginess of that is yeah. going to strip out the fruit. Yep. When you strip out the fruit of a beautiful wine like that, all you're left is with acid and tannin. Tannin, tart. It's like chewing on aspirin. Super tart. Why would you want to chew on aspirin when you could I have don't. cheese? I really, really don't. Okay. Let's try the next cheese down the line, and maybe that would be Pinot friendly. I don't know. Can you pronounce that? Uh, no. Okay, Brevereus d'Argental. Okay. It's sheep. a sheep cheese from Argent from uh, Lyon, from France. France. From France. From France. From France. It's from France. We should have our cone heads on. We should. Let's try France. that. I have never had this cheese. <laughs> I haven't had this cheese, and it um, it came recommended to me by someone that had emailed me this week about doing this. Oh yeah. Yeah. Excellent. So I thought I would try it. It's good okay, so it's creamy. It is almost it's spreadable, right? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And here's the classic question. With rind or without the rind? Oh, I'm without. Oh, yeah. But with, if it's a soft, edible rind like this is, mm -hmm. it, that's kind of what the cheese was meant to be. It's meant but to be. Sometimes mm -hmm. if you have a hard rind or a wax rind, you obviously want to cut the rind off. But mm -hmm. it's all a personal choice. Check right. it out. I'm trying it. Oh, that smells so clean. Mm. It's so light and bright, mm. and then creamy and rich, without the tanginess of the Domaine de Village. Mm -hmm. So I think it will go better with the Pinot Noir. Mm. All right, we're going to start buying that. All right, whoever it is that emailed you, thank you. Thank you. Delicious. That's very good. This is not one I've had before, mm -mm. at least not for a long time. No, and I had to look for it to find it. Mm -hmm. But you know, these are extraordinary times and 
our stores aren't stocked like they would normally be, and yeah, I was happy to find it. Well, she's a provisioner par excellence. That's me. As they have recommended, only one person from a family should go out and provision. Carrie told me right away I was not the provisioner. I'm older, I'm more susceptible, whatever, but she said I'm the provisioner. She goes out, you know, and we do the mask and all that, and then we decontaminate her in the garage and bring in the food <laughs> and do. wipe it all down. It's so wacky to do what we're going through right now, but she is very good at finding things. She'll go out and find things that you didn't think were even out there, even including toilet paper and sanitary wipes. But she goes out and provides wonderful food and then it's up to us to turn it into a wonderful meal. Mm -hmm. So I kudos to her for provisioning like a mad woman. Well, thank you, but I am in the one that's out anyway. I'm in the vineyards uh, several days a week right now and we're in bloom or in bud break and things are leaping out. So I'm in the vineyard and I'm at the winery. So as long as I'm out anyway, there's no sense in both of us going out. That's a good match. That's a really good match. Not too tangy, but nice and creamy. Mm -hmm. And I have to give out a, sh a shout out to another, my favorite, I think it is the Pinot Noir cheese of all time, called Abbe, <clears throat> excuse me, Abbe de Belloc, yeah. which to me is a wonderful cheese, also from France, but semi-hard, semi semi-soft, whatever you want to put it. It's not super soft, but it's that semi-hard cheese that's cow, rich, delicious. Abbe de Belloc is a wonderful yeah. cheese and it always goes with Pinot Noir when we used to do pairings. That was the one that always won. Anytime we had any Pinot Noir out, Abbe de Belloc was the go-to. Hmm. Oh my goodness. That is a lovely, lovely combination. Sometimes you get something that says, happy. Excellent, okay. Reading the comments? No, I just wanted to see if, it, you, know, you know, we don't have a production crew, we don't <laughs> have a director, so I just want to make sure that things are Kind of move it along. Nobody said your zipper was down. No, but they did post that um, the list of cheeses and the wines are out, available on the Cornerstone website, cornerstonesellers.com. Excellent. Yeah, Lynn did that. Awesome, Lynn. Nice job, Lynn. Thank you, Lynn. Wouldn't, mm. Couldn't do this without her. So. Wow. You go from that, which mm -hmm. is nice and mild, to yep. this. This smells like like a cooked milk cheese. Okay, so it's sheets. Yeah, sheep. Also First of all, sheep gives you a little bit more of that lanolin, that little, you know, the smell of hide. A little gamey. Yeah, a little gaminess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good word for it. So it's a little stronger. So mm -hmm. Smelling cheese is important. Mm -hmm. The texture is wonderful. Mm -hmm. It's a semi hard cheese, but it just sort of coats your palate. And what's the name of this cheese? Petite Basque. Petite Basque. Yeah. No, and Basque. What a great area for food. And that is actually where it comes from. It comes from on the French side. Mm -hmm. on, the oh. on the Pyrenees. Very nice. Mm -hmm. And it's a sheep cheese mm -hmm. from the French side of the Pyrenees Mountains, mm -hmm. from the French Basque country. The Basque have a have a way with food. Their so Basque yeah. food is just delicious. Yeah, that's a nice cheese. Mm -hmm. You know what's fun about this is we're going to add some new cheeses to our little repertoire. Once we can get people back together again. There's a cousin of this cheese. And I gotta tell you a funny little story really quick. It's called Idiazabal. Oh, and you've it, told me about that. And it's this cheese, mm -hmm. but it's smoked. And mm. the origin of it mm. comes from the shepherds. Because you get a lot of milk when you have a whole herd of sheep or whatever it is you have a herd of. And they were trying to figure out a way to preserve it before refrigeration. So they would make cheese out of it. And that's basically the derivation of why people made cheese, mm -hmm. was to preserve milk. Preserve milk. So there's a lot of food preservation that before refrigeration came along that was the mother of invention for a lot of different foods. But what the, the uh, shepherds did was when they were up on the hills tending their sheep, they would take their little chunks of sheep cheese and they would put them next to the fire because they would build a fire in the evenings mm -hmm. because that's how they kept warm before they went to bed and they would sleep near the fire and all that. But they would put these little nuggets of cheese between the stones of the fireplace and it would smoke the cheese. And so this smoked sheep cheese became known as Idiazabal, which I have no idea what it means, but Idiazabal is a smoked sheep cheese and it came from the fact that the shepherds needed to keep warm and they needed to preserve their cheese, so they, or their milk, so they made it into cheese and then they smoke the cheese next to their fires. And I thought, that's, that's cool. a very organic process to bring about a food. It's it really sure wonderful. I love that story. That's pretty amazing. 
All right, so this next one that we have is actually from a little island in the Azores um, oh. off the coast of Portugal. Beautiful smell. Yeah, what does it smell? Oh, it is soft. Almost, it's almost rubbery like yeah. you described earlier. Yeah, very right? soft. Kind of a light yellow. Yeah, the color is wonderful, but... Wow, it is in between a brie texture. Mmm, 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 mmm. Wait, you hate it? I would call that a Goldilocks cheese. It's it's not too hard, it's not too soft, mm -hmm. it's not too sweet, it's not mm -hmm. too sour, it's not too funky, it's not too sharp. It's just lovely. So what's it gonna pair with, of the three wines we have opened so far? Pinot, 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 Pinot. Okay, if you insist. Every time. I mean, that just screams of something in between. It's not Sauvignon Blanc, and it's certainly not Cabernet. It's somewhere in between. It might be good with Rosé as well. Oh, that's not bad. Mm. It makes that rosé come up fruit, just this fruity, luscious, almost, um, it changes the texture a little bit, makes it almost a little lush and creamy on the on the core. Can't in the mid mm. It's pretty nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The Wow, both of those go really well. Um, mm. That, mmm. What's interesting about it is the texture and the fat of that cheese mm -hmm. is is a perfect balance or accompaniment to the acid in that wine. Mm. Whereas that creamy richness is a great balance with Pinot Noir. Mm -hmm. So they're very different experiences depending on the color and the texture of your wine. And now I'm wondering, this is so rich and creamy, it might even go the next step to a lighter red. Not a Cabernet, but perhaps something you know, Merlot-ish or blend-ish, if you will. Well, funny you should say that. This is a versatile cheese. This is one I'm not familiar with at all. No, it's a, it's a new one for me too. Portugal. Mm -hmm. oh, the little island in the Azores, right up, and they, they bring oh, yeah. it in through Portugal. Yeah, Tessarina. Yeah, and this is actually, a little tip that I, I learned about this is, they're not actually known to be a high quality producing cheese region, but that is a, pretty high production cheese it gets broad distribution wow. and it's one of their best wow, and we get a little one. bit of it here but this is sort of their production yeah. cheese like this is exactly why i fell in love with wine yeah these cheeses you know i've had a thousand cheeses in my life maybe and i keep finding new ones new that ones. are delicious yeah. and the same thing with wine you never learn everything there is about wine i mean people say oh you're a mm -hmm. wine expert it's like eh, whatever mm -hmm. I'm still discovering things. And I've yeah. been at wine, I've been drinking wine now for 50 years. Mm. That was this year. Yeah. And well, I, there isn't a wine yet that I don't feel like I have something else to learn. Mm. Congratulations on 50 years. You just oh mentioned a red blend. I'm gonna, I've decanted it. I'm gonna open it. I was trying to give it a segue. I know, I know, I know, but I got distracted. <laughs> Look at me getting distracted. Yeah, no, I'm gonna go grab some of that. Oh, um, the 16, that is a nice cheese. I'm gonna get some of the 16. We'll miss you after Oakville you're gone. Station. Ooh. Uh -oh, don't blink, I'm back. Yay. So because it's a 16 and it's still a baby, I actually put it in the decanter. Just to give it a little air. Way to get so, a little goat of go, 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 this, a little taste of this, this goat, wow. This one's called Midnight Moon. Midnight Moon. It's a goat Gouda from Holland. Man, this is delicious. Mm -hmm. It has that nice nuttiness of Gouda and the tanginess of goat. It's the perfect chameleon. Mm. Man, I love smelling cheese. Mm. Wow. Oakville Station. Oakville Station is a it's really, uh, it's a little gem of a vineyard. And it's right up in the heart of Oakville. Um, and it butts up to the Tokolon Vineyard um, up there on the west side of the uh, Highway 29, for those of you that had a chance to visit here. Um, and the University of Davis has been uh, owned it and has been farming it for a million years. And um, they take such great care of this vineyard and it's used for research. It's one of the most highly researched vineyards in the country. And we get three things off that vineyard. We get Cabernet Sauvignon and we get Cabernet Franc, which is a block that they actually planted for Cornerstone Cellars uh, back in 1999. I think in 99 that was planted. And then it's got Merlot in it as well. And the Merlot vines are actually just across the avenue from the Cab Franc, right in the heart of Cab Country. So um, there is, it's a beautiful vineyard. The Merlot usually gets harvested first, and then the Cabernet Franc comes in after that, and the Cabernet Sauvignon comes in after that. So this is about 45% Cab, 
about 35% Cab Franc, and then the rest is Merlot. All 100% hmm. Oakville Station. You should try it with this Azores Portugal cheese. If I must. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't Maybe I'm if wrong. I'm... It might be too heavy for the cheese. That is good cheese. Mm -hmm. That that creaminess, but not. No, oh, remarkable. Yeah. yeah. Mm. That's good. I think the Pinot is just a little bit better. Yeah. But but they both work. Semi-hard cheeses and Pinot. Yeah, exactly. Amazing. I have a treat for you though. What? I I, I every, love treats. Every once in a while, when yeah. you're putting all these different wines and foods together. Uh -huh. You get a wine and a food where it goes one plus one equals a third flavor. One plus one equals three. Right. And I may be building this up too much, but taste this, which is the goat gouda from oh. Midnight Moon uh -huh. from Holland, and taste the Pinot Noir. Oh. Delicious. Delicious cheese, flavorful, not. Did you smell it? Mm hmm. Yes, because you told me that I'm supposed to. Yeah, I know, but I mean, it has that mm -hmm. cooked milk cheese. Then taste it with the Pinot Noir. Tell me what you think. But wait, there's something in there that, like, with even without the wine, and, and then and it's a texture. But it's got a little bit of that granule in it. It's got a little bit of the texture. There's a like there's a little flavor pockets in there. You know the I mean? granular characters. That those are amino acids mm -hmm. that are naturally occurring proteins mm -hmm. in cheese in milk. Not that one. This one. Oh, the Pinot. And those give you a little tangy, little burst of umami, if you will. You know, flavor. that's delicious. This is great cheese. Oh my gosh, it really is. We have, I, I haven't bought, I, I don't think I've, we've ever bought that. Taste that and see what you think. I used to buy this all the time when I worked at. Oh, you did? Very pleasant. Oh. And, and, uh, Oxbow. Oxbow. Wow. Isn't that good? Yes. What I get, yes. and maybe you don't, because not everybody tastes the same. Mm -hmm. There's a caramel flavor mm -hmm. that comes out of it. There's a sweetness to it. A sweet caramel cooked yeah. milk flavor. Mm -hmm. And that's not coming from the oak. Mm -mm. It's not coming from the mm -hmm. wine. And it's not coming from the cheese. Mm -hmm. It's bringing out the sweetness and the, and the caramel characters of the cheese because of the flavors of the wine. It's a one plus one equals three. We actually need to send that to all of our friends. That. Every, everybody that's watching, you'll uh -huh. get some. Mm -hmm. uh, hey. <laughs> that's delicious. Mm -hmm. Wow. Every once in a while you hit a combination and you're like, oh, well, uh, uh, we should remember that because that's really good. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, it brings out this kind of cooked caramel, almost caramelized milk, mm. almost like brown butter. Oh, you know, it's really we good. could stop now and I'd be super happy. Yeah, and if we stop now, mm -hmm. we wouldn't be super hammered either, but let's yeah, keep well, going. It's Friday. We're not driving anywhere. Happy Friday, everybody. For God's sakes, we're not going anywhere ever. Any One day. more amazing <laughs> week, eh? We've survived another week. What is this? Day 33 of our 33, day 33 yeah. for us. We sell, a, we sell, we send a postcard mm -hmm. each day to her mother. And today was day 33. Day so 33. that's how we keep track of the days because they all are blending mm -hmm. together. All blend together. <laughs> I know. All right, let's next one. Asiago. This, Asiago. So this is interesting. It's um, salty, tangy, spicy. And lots of people make it. It seems like it's similar to Parmigiano Reggiano, which we actually are also going to try. But Asiago is one of those cheeses that, like, yeah. if you want a grilled cheese sandwich, like that's a cheese that grated. But here's where texture comes in. If yeah. you try to take Reggiano Parmigiano and do that, oh, you, you can't couldn't do it. This, look, it crumbles. It's dry. It's crumbling. Parmigiano Reggiano, this, right? This is flexible. It has little bits and little pockets and pits yeah. and all that sort of thing. Yep. That, but it has some of the same similar tangy, mm. salty, mm -hmm. spicy characteristics. Mm -hmm. Asiago is lovely. And if, if you don't mm -hmm. want to spend the money for Reggiano Parmigiano, Asiago is a wonderful less expensive choice because it still grates you can still use the same text like Everything. This, this less crumbly pasta but... anything you're going to use oh. parmesan for you can use asiago yeah. for and it'll, it's probably two-thirds the price i tell you and that is why we don't buy the parmigiano reggiano that often Even it's amazing do, it's, but it's, it's there's no other cheese like it no. I, there's no other like but like it's it. not it's certainly not for the budget but that but. if you just need like if you get up and a you know, so Sunday mm -hmm. afternoon and you need to make a grilled cheese sandwich. Well, that's what I was just about to say. It's funny how you said that. that. Because, man, Asiago on a grilled cheese. Grilled cheese, mm -hmm. usually the best ones are made with like three cheeses. 
But Asiago is like a Plenty. great yeah. addition to a grilled mm -hmm. cheese sandwich. Pardon me. So what would you pair with that? We're almost out of peanut. Oh my god. I don't know, honey. Let's try it because right. I have no idea. I don't think it's... What I love about these wines is that I had the Midnight Moon and the Pinot Noir. It, mm -hmm. it, it sort of had mm -hmm. that epiphany flavor. Kind of magical. Then I tried it with the rosé and mm -hmm. it was dull. It was like stupid. It was... Mm -hmm. um, it was like, you know, like dancing with your dog. I mean, you know, no, no one's going to do that. No, you're not supposed to do that. Well, now, these days, people are. I know. You used to say kissing your sister, and mm -hmm. then people thought it's that was, you know, not right. politically correct. Dance but but it just wasn't, it wasn't interesting. It wasn't mm -hmm. um, interactive. Yeah. You can try it with a Sauvignon Blanc and other things, and that wine is, is I mean, that cheese is just, you know, not, not shaking hands. Because yeah. I always said that sometimes yeah. they shake hands, yeah. sometimes they butt heads, yeah. and sometimes they're train tracks. And when they're train tracks, they just don't shake yeah, hands. Not, yeah. And that's what that is. Yeah, but these are okay, Pino, but they don't sing. No, they, yeah. that is for that board, and this is for this board. Oh, what a coincidence. Yeah, that's the way we planned it. That's but weird. These are very good cheeses, and I don't know what which wine goes with the Asiago. Um, not the Sauvignon, the Sauvignon Blanc's okay. Yeah. Like, not terrible, but not, um, so I'm willing to try them all, taking yeah. one for the team. I don't think the lighter ones are going to work. It's the Asiago that's so salty and so assertive. It's, it's actually oh. so strong for the Pinot. The rosé is not bad. The rosé uh -huh. brings up the fruit. Because of the fruit calms the salt. Mm -hmm. That often happens. Mm -hmm. The Pinot's not wonderful. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try it again, though. The salt kills the fruit a little bit, and fruit is what makes yeah. Pinot so charming. Well, we found that the saltier, more tart cheeses go better with the white wines, the rosé. Yeah. yeah, and maybe this is our transition cheese. Mm -hmm. Check it out with the Pinot, but also check it out with the, the, red, with blend. the red blend. Might be the way to go. Oh, yeah. Sometimes mm. you have to have heavier. Mm -hmm. mm. This wine... What I've noticed so far is that some the cheeses more often are changing the perception of the wine. Correct. It's in reverse. This wine actually changes my perception of, the cheese. of that cheese. It's sort of a hey. But that's the magic of wine hey, food, right? Hey, you should this. try that. You should, what, you, what, if you, what if you tried this? Well, that's kind of fun. That's like using a mushroom in a sauce as a bridge ingredient mm. to like a great Pinot Noir. Yeah. You realize... Food enhances wine as wine enhances food. Mm -hmm. You rub my back, I'll rub yours. Pretty I good. love your analogies. It's pretty good. I'll check you later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's much better. We'll try better. that out later. Much better with the, with the dark red Isn't it? than it is with the Pinot Noir. Mm -hmm. Because of the salt and the, um, the strong there's, flavors of well, the Well, there's cheese. some umami in there. But this, but the, but the, but the Oakville Station red holds up to that, like really actually expresses that model. Yeah, and you could go further with that. You could go into Cabernet. You can go into Syrah. You can go into full blown, you know, Zinfandel if you had to. Asiago is a pretty strong cheese. If my arm was twisted. Yeah, if you had to. If you had to. Um, you know what I'm gonna do? We're we'll moving on to red. Yeah, dough. would you actually Let's just take, flip, take that board, and I'm gonna move this board. We're very flexible here. Wait. So we've got four more cheeses. And then we're almost done. Don't worry. And this worry. one I think is important if you look and you go, oh, a couple of those are really bright orange. That's because one of them is from Wisconsin and that's how they make cheddar in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. I would know that I'm actually from there. The other one is Mimolette from France, France. which is probably the France. coolest cheese in the world in terms of color. It is. It is very cool. Well, it's there. Look at that. Prairie it, Sunset and, from Wisconsin is almost identical color. And I have to tell you a little secret. The Mimolette is, um, you can find it on most cheese boards in, in cab country. Like, oh, we yeah. all kind of know. We all kind of know the Mimolette. So is a, yeah. yeah, but it's this beautiful, like, bright mm. orange, very hard cheese. Like, really incredibly hard cheese. Like, you need a jackhammer to cut no, it. No, it's not that bad. It's pretty hard. It's not that bad. It's pretty hard. Wow, mm. what a wonderful smell. Tart. Now see, cooked milk. If mm -hmm. you ever wanted to smell mm -hmm. a cooked milk cheese, that smells like caramel and, and oh man. It's a hard mm. cheese, but it's got that umami in it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very And it's got cheese. some uh, tooth to it. It's, it's not... Mm -hmm. It's toothsome, as it's they say toothsome. In, in England. Mm. Right. Man, that is God, a lot of that, cheese. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to require a full-blown red. I'm going to try the peanut. Right. I'm not going to even try the rosé or the Sauvignon Blanc because no. 
I think we've left that in the dust. Is that the Pinot? This is the Pinot. Okay. Oh, you decanted the red wine. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's just a baby. As we've discovered during this hunkering down mm -hmm. in our bunker. We have. Hunker in a bunker. We have we but have learned a few things hunkering down. We're 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 decanting mm -hmm. more than ever. We are. I think we've probably decanted more wide in the last mm. four weeks than we have in the last ten years. Well, you know, we got a lot of time. Yeah, and we have a lot of wine. We have a lot of wine. <laughs> no, it's, it, it, um, oh, what, it's, what it's doing for this wine in particular, while it is ready to go, we've released it, and the wine club is going to be getting it in their May um, shipment. It's um, it's beautiful, and it's ready, and it's the fruits come back to it. Oh, yeah. and, you know, it goes through a little phase after you bottle it, and it's mm. like, eh. What year is that? 2016. Oh, that should be coming into its own right mm -hmm. now. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I hate to say it. Oh, try it with a mimolette. I love the mm -hmm. I've always loved the mm -hmm. mm, yeah. You know, and I actually stopped buying it for us for a while because we had it so often. Well, we haven't had it for four, four or five years. I know, but when for I a used while. to work at at, uh, at Oxbow, mm -hmm. I would bring little hunks of it home. It would be like little, mm -hmm. little sinful things, but mm -hmm. man, it's so good. Mm -hmm. It's so different. And I don't remember the the you know, the actual process. I used to know how to do it, but um, not how to do it, but how they did it. And there's a a rind they make, and I uh -huh. believe it's got if, I, little bugs. if my if my memory serves me correctly, mm -hmm. there is an an herb or a seed or something that they use to create the rind. I mean, it's a very special cheese. Yeah. And they look like cantaloupes. The, 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 Precisely. the wheels look actually like cantaloupes. They've got this kind of interesting texture along the outside. This would be a rind that I don't recommend you eat. Some are, some are considered edible, that, uh, that one not. I don't think it's caraway, but it might be. Mm -hmm. I, but again, I don't think it's caraway, but there time is a erodes sleep. the memory mm -hmm. and as yeah. all do things. But um, that is a really wonderful cheese. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we have this crumbly, tart, salty, Cheese, you know, again, from Italy, mm -hmm. the Parmigiano Reggiano. So while I love this cheese, and there are, there are lots That's of producers cool. in that region, right, that make this? If you can find it, I know it's harder now to source some things because trucking, and apparently it's more important to, to be trucking toilet paper than cheese, right? But this, this cheese is a super amazing, comes in from Parmigiano Reggiano, and they also, in that region, they make butter. They make a butter that is <laughs> it's as close to this, with a higher fat content. It's got the tart, but it's creamy, it's and it's salty. It's that close to cheese. It's that it, you just spread that on a little piece of croissant or a, a crusty bread. Mm. It's but made it, by a producer of Parmesan Reggiano. It is. It's the best butter, I one of the best butters I've ever had in my life. Mm -hmm. And we've had butter tastings here. Well, yeah, we've done we, butter we tastings. We taste everything. Mm -hmm. We do. I swear to God. We did butter tastings. We what, had six or seven, eight different butters one night. We tried them on um, a toasted baguette, and then we also tried them on popcorn, because what better judge than Cause we had to. popcorn? It was, it was like literally. I know. And, that, store, and that actually was one of our favorites, the butter-wise, was the Parmigiano Reggiano oh. butter. Um, but then, weirdly, this little producer in Vermont makes this butter and it comes in a little wood, like a little oh. wood basket that looks like one of those apple picking baskets oh from God. olden time days. Some of you aren't even old enough to know what I'm talking about. But it's this little wooden mm. basket and it's butter in a basket. It comes from Vermont and it's the most amazing butter. But the Parmigiano mm. butter has all these characteristics of a tart, salty, umami. And that same producer makes a water buffalo cheese as mm. well. Or, or uh, butter. butter that's truly amazing, mm -hmm. but the Parmesan straight butter is just killer. Oh, you've got the Pinot. I got the Pinot. Okay. Well, you know me. Oh, and I've got the the, oh, the station red. Yeah. Mm. This one also, this red and this this red with this cheese also changes the the uh, flavor components of the cheese a little bit as well. Texture, you know, yeah. salt, umami. Yep. Uh, uh, um, you know, amino acids, mm -hmm. all sorts of things in there. Mm -hmm. If you're ever in Parma, one of the most amazing experiences you can have is go to a good, 
producer of Reggiano Parmesan. And they're happy to show it to you. And they'll take you to the aging caves. And they'll let you taste a cheese from the spring milk. And a cheese from the summer milk. And a cheese from the fall milk. And because the cows eat differently, depending on what's growing in the spring or summer or fall, they all have similarities. They're all brothers and sisters under the skin, under the rind, if you will. But there's differences that are completely fascinating. Whereas there's a more green onion grassiness in the spring, and there's more of this richness, ripeness, and then in the fall, there's this nuttiness. If you ever have a chance to be in Parma and can taste the different cheeses made with different times of the year milk, it is eye-opening. It's something I'll never forget. And they take a coring device and they core the Parmesan wheel. And you, you just think, well, okay, shoot me now because I ain't never going to have anything better than this. I want to go to there. Yeah, it's beautiful. I want beautiful. to go to there. It's beautiful. That sounds, that actually sounds wonderful. All right, so in this cheese and wine red, pairing. Red, 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 red. Yep. In this cheese and wine pairing, I actually put in a ringer. So here's the ringer. You see it sitting right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what I found, and a couple of stores carry them now, and if you can find them, this is a little piece of crispy Parmesan cheese. A little piece of heaven. 100% Parmesan cheese. They put it on the thing, they, little, they bake it a little bit. It actually is, for any of you that are like avoiding carbs, this thing, salty, crunchy, 100% Parmesan, amazingly delicious. Like, you don't put cheese on that because that would be overkill. It's a cheese cracker. It is a cheese cracker. And we have been tasting with some regular plain, kind of plain crackers that the cheese show through, but what do you think that goes with? Uh, I think by itself, it will go with, I think it's too salty for the Pinot Noir. Mm -hmm. I think it'll go more with that particular with red. red blend. Okay. Because of the salt content. There's a good amount of salt because when you... Oh! Yeah. When, <laughs> there you go. Oh, yeah. When you bake this Parmesan down, you're concentrating the salt and you're getting rid of some of the fat yeah. and the oils. And it is truly a remarkable thing. We call these cheesy crackers. Cheesy crackers. And literally, you could you could bribe us with cheesy crackers. We you will we will do anything. Backflip, yeah. somersaults, anything physically yeah. possible, we will do to get cheesy crackers. And they're not that expensive, but they feel right. like crack. So let's see if I can do this. Here's a here's a free advertisement. Yeah. Anybody and that you wants know what? to sponsor us, please. I wish I had actually purchased some stock in this company. These things are incredible. We should tell them where you buy them. Well, it's, yeah, it's easy enough. The Whole Foods stocks them. And we found them other places as well. But even in this hard to find stuff kind of an environment we live in, the Whole Foods has been bringing them in. They make some. Provisioner. Yeah, they make some with, um, with herbs and spices, caramel seeds, everything, yeah, everything yeah. thing. I mean, try them. Personal opinion. Why not? Crap next to try them. These. these are but the thing. That thing, like crazy. Like a little tip, like if you're at the end of a dinner and you still have a little wine left and you don't really want to eat something sweet for dessert, pull a couple of those things out, finish your wine. It's the most satisfying, like crunchy, salty, tart, satisfying. Yeah. yeah. If you're trying to eat less and you have well, clearly we're not you have a small honey, amount we're on lockdown. You have a small amount of food at dinner and you're still a little hungry, yeah. we break out the cheese and crackers and then we eat three or four boxes of those and then we're done. It actually doesn't matter if you're hungry or not. Yeah. We bring them out. Cheesy salty. It's yeah. really good. Yeah, so that's the ringer actually, I think, in the in the tasting today. Ah. So we have two more wines. Prairie and then we probably need to go. Oh, did you try this? Okay, two, good. Two more cheeses, actually. You have two more cheeses. We got all the wine. I just I just jumped ahead to the Prairie All Sunset. Right. The this yeah. is a perfect example of the Prairie Sunset is delicious. It's not quite as assertive as the Mimolette, but even with the Pinot Noir, it's underwined. It doesn't have enough. The Pinot Noir doesn't have enough oomph, mm -hmm. enough strength, enough yeah. power to handle that. That's a pretty big cheese. It's a red wine yeah. cheese, and it's much better with the red blood. Coming from my home state of Wisconsin, so. One of the cool things that happens, you, that's when I go home, my family still lives in the Madison area in Wisconsin. And what's super awesome is they actually have a wine country. And when I go home, my family and we actually get in the car and we go wine tasting. 
But one time I went home and Your brother. I, my brother and I, we, John and I hopped in the car and we actually went to a couple of artisan cheese shops, Hook, and, we, and I wish I could remember the other two. It was super cool. There's great artisan cheeses coming in from Wisconsin. And if you can find them in California, then that's that says something about the cheeses. There's that really making. great cheeses in Wisconsin. Oh, and a beautiful of cheeses. There. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they have that one, you and your brother went to the chocolate uh, makers there. They have some mm -hmm. artisan chocolate mm -hmm. makers there that make handmade, yeah. beautiful artisan chocolates. Yeah. And you're like, wow, this is very mm -hmm. European. They mm -hmm. have, uh, they have, they have beer manufacturers. They have spirits manufacturers. Oh, lots of beer. They have wine manufacturers, and they have cheese manufacturers, and then they have chocolate. It's yeah. like, wow, this is great. I love yeah. Wisconsin. It's like perfect. Yeah, They're, they they have everything. So it's pretty cool. That it's actually it's funny to fly from California to Wisconsin and have your family go, hey, want to go wine tasting? I'm like, I don't know. Yes, do I? I do. Okay, yes, I do. And we've had some pretty interesting wines, but man, the cheese tour we took that day was amazing. And this is just one of many, many examples of really, really great Wisconsin cheese. You remember, I mean, you probably do, that wonderful Wisconsin cheese that we had wrapped in a cabbage leaf or a lettuce leaf. I don't remember which one it was. I don't know. If that was, was that Wisconsin? It was. Because it was amazing. No, it was like one that we'd had from France. Okay. And we had, when we had the one from France, then we had this one, we're like, wow. It was something super funky, crazy Wisconsin it cheese. It was funky. And man, was it good. Yeah. I mean, wrapped in a creamy. lettuce leaf or cabbage leaf, whatever it was, it's creamy, it was yeah. funky, it was athlete's foot, everything yeah. you wanted yeah. of cheese, you know, it was great. We opened it up early, and by the time people oh, arrived, it was, it was like oozing all over the oh place. Oh my God, yeah, it was remember. just oozing all over the yeah. place. Yeah, you almost could have like thrown that into a shot glass. Oh, man, yeah. it was great. Yeah. Now we're moving into danger country. Yeah, what you got, hon? Well, you know, take one smell. Yeah, okay. So, I also know that I have some friends, a lot of people actually love blue cheese, Stilton cheese, anything with that blue veiny. I'm gonna hold this up. And this is where the honey comes in. Do, 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 do. I don't know if you can see that. I'm gonna get a second the camera and a production guy so that we actually can do this like, you know. A little know. closer. Move a little closer. No, I got it. You got it? Yeah, it's focus. So it's got that blue veiny, you've seen it. They put it on your salad sometimes when you forget to ask them not to put it on your salad. Um, actually, a lot of people actually like it a lot. For me, I can't, I can't find a wine that can stand up to that other than port. Yeah, port or something extremely sweet like a really, you know, like late harvest wine yeah. or something like that, or a sauterne. Yeah. But most of the time it's port. Yeah. It needs it's sugar. It's got some sweetness. It's got but, a ton of yeah. salt. Yeah. I mean, if you had a sweet red, that would actually. Uh, and there's a lot of sweet what reds. About a, what about a sweet white? What about a sauterne? Well, yeah, sauterne would work. Would work. Um, you know, a really super late harvest. A tokai, something like that. Yeah, tokai would work. A late harvest uh, uh, white wine of Shannon Block or Riesling of some sort. Or, you know, if you're talking about a, a Trocan Baranos Lesa or a Baranos Lesa from Germany, it might work, but really port is what that calls yeah. for. Stilton. And port. Yeah. That's what it's called for. Yeah. But sweet reds. There's a lot of producers in America that, you know, Missouri and, and North Dakota. I mean, there's producers every 50, all 50 states have producers. Some of them make sweet reds, and it's the hottest growing category in the world. But it is. Not everybody loves sweet reds. And, you know, there's port drinkers out there, and there's not port drinkers, but sweet reds, just a regular, regular old bottle of red wine that's mm -hmm. not dry, it's sweet. Yeah. There's a lot of people that love that sort of thing, and there's nothing wrong with it, and it would go beautifully with a Stilton. That actually would be beautiful on a dessert cheese tray. Like if you did, two, you only need three cheeses. One, two, three, right. the third being the Stilton or a blue, and the wine being a port, or a yeah, late that, harvest something, or a Sauterne. That blows the Pinot Noir off the table. It says, don't even think about it. You know what, I wasn't gonna try it, so I actually appreciate you taking one for oh, the no. team. You gotta try everything. I can't try everything. I know. Uh, for, you know, I personally, I just can't. It's, it's. Mm. I mean, even the red blend doesn't, doesn't hold a chance. As a winemaker, that's everything I hope doesn't occur. I hope that never occurs. Like, I don't want that. I it's don't too strong, like too salty, it's too tangy. No. It's too assertive. Yeah. Everything that you're going to put with that wine that we have available right this moment. Mm -hmm is underwining the cheese. Yeah. And you need to you need to dominate that cheese 
with something sweet. Yeah. And this is where honey would come in, mm. but you never would be able to use honey as a as a bridge to any of the wines no. we've had today. No. And there would be chocolate. We'd put chocolate on that plate. Chocolate cheese, sweet wine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And actually, now that we, I just mentioned the chocolate, um, coming up, not Maybe the next good. week, but somewhere down the line, I forget where it is, we're actually going to do a wine and chocolate pairing. And um, as many of you know, those that are near and dear to me know that I actually don't really care for wine and, and chocolate together. But I do know that there are some wines that pair beautifully with chocolate and lots of people love it. So we're actually going to do uh, an, uh, an episode of Carrie's Kitchen when we're going to do some um, wine and chocolate. So that, I think that's it for today. If there's anything else, I, we've gone through all the wines and cheeses. You're going to be able to find the list of cheeses on our website at cornerstonecellars.com. The wines that we had tonight are listed there as well. Um, the, for those of you that are in our wine club, the Sauvignon Blanc and the 2016 um, red wine which is just beautiful, um, from Oakville Station is going to be available. We ran actually longer than I thought we were going to run, and thank you for everyone that has hung in there with us. Thanks for your patience. We appreciate it. There are some really beautiful wines here. If you send me your address, we'll send you some cheese, because we're not actually going to be able to eat all this. I'll have mm -hmm. to, I don't know. But we ended up in a disaster, which is fine. We, I kind of knew, I kind of knew that's how it was going to go, but people do love it. That's just too strong for yeah. anything that we're drinking, yeah. but... We've had some really great epiphanies. Yeah. And one of them was that, you know, that cheese with the Pinot Noir. Woo wee. Yeah, I would say for me, the highlights, if we're gonna wrap this up, I would go certainly the goat cheese with the Sauvignon Blanc. Definitely. Right? And then the Domaine de Village with well nothing at all, just on your finger, in the mouth. That's how it is for me. Then Smear we, it on your face and lick exactly. it. Exactly. And then actually you pulled we pulled that one off to the side, the one we loved. So let's say again, the one we loved with the Pinot Noir. Midnight Moon. Midnight Moon. That, and then isn't that the it's Cypress goat, Grove? Goat, goat cheese, cheese. Goat cheese Gouda. Yeah, which isn't goaty. It's Gouda. And it doesn't taste goaty for those of you that are kind of concerned that that's going to be um, too gamey. And then Mimo Lab is a classic. The Parmigiano Reggiano is a classic. I love my home, home state. The Prairie Sunset. The Prairie Sunset. Stood, stood well with the rest Absolutely. of the Absolutely. If you put that with Mimolet and Reggiano Parmesan, you think, oh my gosh, that's a little unfair. Mm -hmm. It held its, its own. It stood solid, for sure. There's some beautiful, beautiful cheeses coming Go out. Go Wisconsin. Hey. Absolutely. Love you very much, honey. I Thanks for joining too. us. Mm. Mm. Thank you for joining us. Next week, I can't remember what it is we're going to do. We're going to do something. But what you should know is we're actually moving from Fridays at 4 p.m. Pacific to Thursdays at 4 p.m. Pacific. There's a whole lot of traffic going on on Fridays, and so we're going to actually move our, uh, our episodes on to Thursday. So join us there. We'll send you some reminders. Thank you so much for being with us because we love doing this, and it just feels like we're a little bit more connected. And it gives us a chance to drink and eat. Wait, we were going to do that anyway. Oh, yeah. We this way, to share it with you. we get to do it with you because I'm pretty <laughs> sure it's Friday afternoon, and the rest of you have actually opened up something as well. Woohoo! So cheers. Love you guys. Love you. Love you too. Love you. Okay, now I'm going to just turn this off and I'm... And I'll just hold this until you finish I don't, turning I don't it off. I don't know how. Hold on.